praise the Lord. Rise up as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for such a beautiful day, wonderful day, special day, and a unique day. Lord, we pray that all your promises will be yes and amen for every one of us this new year. In Jesus' name. All the prophecies of your word, everything you have said, everything you promised. Oh Lord, we pray nothing will be missing in any life. In Jesus' name. Spirit, soul, and body, you'll bless us. Every day, every week, every month, the whole year, you'll bless us. There'll be blessing upon our families. Blessing on the work of our hand. Blessing in the church, in the ministry. And blessing in this country, in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, you'll surprise everyone with miracles. Surprise this nation with miracles. And turn this nation around and turn every one of us around in Jesus' name. We're asking, Lord, that this first day of the year, first day of the month, first day of the week, oh Lord, a special, unique blessing you pour upon every one of us in Jesus' name. Speak your word to every heart. And bring to life everything you want for each of us. We thank you because we know that you have confirmed. And it's going to be done. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. You can sit down. I don't know whether you have noticed that this particular day. Especially in different ways. Number one is the first day of the week. Not only that, the first day of the month and the first day of the year. And then it is 1-1-2012. One, one, you know, sometimes you could have a Sunday that will be the feast of uh, January. Or could be the 2nd of January. But this particular time is the first day of the first month of the year. It's peculiar. And uh, I want to talk to you from the scriptures as I look at the scriptures searching. And I see this peculiar day. It doesn't appear too many times, but the few times it appears being the first day of the first month of the year in our lives is so peculiar that I don't want you to miss the peculiarity of this day. That's why I'm talking to you on the first day of a glorious future. The first day of a glorious future. There is a kind of a division between the past and the future. The past has ended already. And today is the first day of the rest of your life. And it happens to be the first day of the month and the first day of the week and the day of light. And the Lord is telling us this unique and special day, something is about to break forth in your life. And something is about to happen and it is going to take effect in our lives in Jesus' name. You want to look at Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 40, I'm reading from verse 1. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month shalt thou set up the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. It says, On the first day of the first month, there's something peculiar. The children of Israel, they have come out of captivity already. I'm just assuring you that you have come out of captivity. This new year, there will be no bondage. This new year, there's no imprisonment. And this new year, all the calamities of the past, all those things have flown away, have gone away with the Red Sea behind us in Jesus' name. And here we come to a new territory. Here we come to a new day. Here we come to a new week, a new month. And a new year, the first day of the first month, you read in that verse 2. And he said, you will set up. The tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. Then it says, And thou shalt put therein the ark of the testimony. And cover the ark with the veil. It's telling us that this year, the centrality of the ark of the covenant will be the important thing in our lives in Jesus' name. Maybe you don't understand the history of the ark of the covenant. And it thinks the ark of the covenant did. Just the presence of that ark in the temple of those Ashdodites that had captured the ark of the Lord. And then Dagon was there representing Satan and dragon. That Dagon fell all by itself. I'm saying that all the paths of darkness are going to fall this year. Whether we are there to pray or not, just the presence of the ark of the covenant and the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart, in your soul, in your spirit, in your family, in your life, all the paths of darkness, they're going to bow, they're going to be broken this year in Jesus' name. 
the centrality of the ark of the covenant that the lord is talking to us about on this first day of the new year that the lord is saying this is going to be the presence of the almighty god in your life and then he says in verse 4 and thou shalt bring in the table and set in order the things that are to be set in order upon it you find those words set in order set in order set in order a few times over there that that means that everything that's in disarray in your life disorganized in your life this is the year of setting things in order yeah. all the things that brought confusion disorganization in your life and then this one is there and that one ought not to be there i can't understand this i can't understand that there's confusion there there's confusion there the lord is about from this day to set something in order in your life in jesus name and you know every time the lord will make a midway correction midway midway reorganization that maybe when you are asleep and when this is happening that's happening the lord sets everything in order in your life and you just say that this year is different it's like all the disorderliness disorganization or, or disarray everything is just set in order this year in your personal life in jesus name i can't understand this my child i can't understand that my child i can't understand this other one even about my husband, about my wife, why is this confusion always there? Just wait a minute. This is the day of setting everything in order. You know, in your husband's life, in your wife's life, in your children's life, in your parents' life, in the whole family, and then in our church, I can't understand. I'm hearing this about that. I'm hearing this about that. Where do we begin to set things in order? The Almighty God Himself will set everything in order in the body of christ in this church in jesus name then he says thou shalt bring in the candlestick and light the lamps thereof there is light this year all darkness everything is going and the light of the lord will shine in our hearts in our lives in jesus name look at verse 25 and he lighted the lamps before the lord as the lord commanded moses moses represents all the ministers of the lord all the ministers and preachers of the gospel in our church and through our ministers and preachers and pastors we're going to have the light of the gospel there's going to be illumination in jesus name there's going to be revelation in jesus name there's going to be inspiration to you as you look at the ministers this year you'll wonder i had that minister before i had that preacher before but things are different now because there's light coming there's light coming into all our ministers and they're going to have illumination they're going to have inspiration they're going to have revelation they never had before in jesus name and then he tells us in verse 34 in verse 34 for it says then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation and the glory of the lord filled the tabernacle in the year of glory i said it's the year of glory it's going to be a glorious year in jesus name but remember the beginning it is from the first day of the first month of the year that the lord said you set all that up and if you put the ark of the lord in its central place then every other thing will come into place and there's going to be the setting in order and then there's going to be the glory of the lord that fills the church of the living god look at the final verse there in verse 38 it says for the cloud of the lord was upon the tabernacle by day and the fire was on it by night and then it says in the sight of all the house of israel throughout tell me the rest all their journeys that is as a journey from january to february from february to march and then all through to december all through this year your journey is going to be the fire of the holy ghost and it's going to be the cloud of protection and everything is going to be set in order because we started the chapter by the first day of the first month of the year and because of this peculiarity that's what we're looking at this day and we're looking at the first day day of a glorious future the future is going to be glorious the future is going to be filled with the glory of god you saw it right there and that's why i'm talking about three kinds of days that represent today number one a prophetic day today is a prophetic day it doesn't always come like this that you have a prophetic day but the lord is telling you that this is unique and this is special and this is spectacular it is a prophetic day number two it is 
a preparatory day. That yes, I'm looking at the future. I'm looking at the rest of the whole year. And I'm saying that whatever decision I take today, and whatever determination you make today, whatever you're saying, oh, today, this is my desire. This is where I'm going. And then you look at the whole year ahead of you. It's a preparatory day for something ahead. Number three, it is a peculiar day. Number one, a prophetic day. Number two, a preparatory day. And then number three, a peculiar day. Come back to number one again. It's a prophetic day for a great future. A prophetic day for what kind of future? A great future. Number two, a preparatory day for a greater future. Well, already the Lord gives you the word. And then our uh, ministers in singing, they told us that you know, every promise the Lord has given you, it is for this year. Every prophecy that the Lord has given you, it is for this year. And we're saying that you need to prepare for something greater than you ever imagined in your life. If you had a small vision, broaden it. If you have a little dream, expand it. Because it's going to be greater than your thought. This year is going to be greater and broader and deeper and higher than you ever prayed about or ever thought about in your life in Jesus' name. If you prayed for two things, you are going to have four things. If you prayed for three things, you are going to have seven things. Because it's going to be greater than you ever imagined in your life. We are in for a greater future. And today is a preparatory day for that greater future. Number three is a peculiar day for a grand future. A grand future. A peculiar day for a grand future. It is coming. I said it is coming. And you're going to experience it in Jesus' name. Number one, can you tell me number one again? A prophetic day for a great future. We're looking at Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. What a day it was and what a day this is. Exodus chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 13. It says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. Everybody say today. Yeah. And then he says, for the Egyptians whom ye have seen, today ye shall see them no more forever. You see, these children of Israel, every time they saw an Egyptian, they saw an oppressor. Every time they saw an Egyptian, they saw a captor. Every time they saw an Egyptian, they saw a taskmaster. Every time they saw an Egyptian, they saw somebody holding the whip, tormenting their lives, harassing their lives. They saw somebody that, you know, they were helpless. There was no way they could get out of the hand of the Egyptians. But all of a sudden, somebody came to town and said, he told Pharaoh, let my son go so that he may go to worship me. And you know the story, how Pharaoh began to say, how can that be? I will not let them go because they are my captives and they are my slaves forever and ever. Eventually, after a series of miracles, then he said, okay, you can go. But all of a sudden, he said, what came on me that I allowed those people to go and at this time now, they were hedging between two mountains and then in front of them was a Red Sea that they couldn't swim over because we're talking about millions of people and and then behind them, you have the Egyptian army running after them saying, we got you, we got you, we're taking you back to where you came from. Somebody wants to take you back to all those harassments of last year, it will not happen. They want to take you back to all those sorrows and all those tears of the past years, it will not happen. Even though we see them, they might be very near, but they are coming to their end in Jesus' name. I want you to understand that although it was strange to the children of Israel, they didn't know that Pharaoh would still follow them. But known unto God are all this was from the foundation of the world. God knew that Pharaoh will come. He knew that the Egyptians will come. He knew that the army of Egypt will come after them. He knew before they got to the borders of those of the land, he knew that the mountain will be there. He knew that the mountain will be there. He knew that the Red Sea will be before them. He knew that they will be hedged in in between the mountains and the sea and the Egyptians army nothing takes God by surprise I said nothing takes God by surprise and so he knew what he was going to do and then Moses said don't fear and I come to tell you on this first day of the first month of this new year there's nothing for you to fear 
Because he says today, this special day and this unique day and this peculiar day, that the Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more forever in Jesus' name. Well, you know the story to cut a long story short. Before the end of the chapter, all those enemies, we cannot see them anymore. And before the end of this chapter in your life, because there's a new chapter in your life. Give me a good amen. amen. And there's a new phase in your life. Before this new chapter of your life, before this new phase of your life, all those Egyptian armies you used to fear, they used to bring pam, pam, pam in your heart. You'll see them no more in Jesus' name. Look at verse 30, 31. It says in verse 31, And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did, deed upon the Egyptians and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. They saw the great work of the Lord. You will see the great work of the Lord. Did I tell you that this day for you is a prophetic day and it's a prophetic day for a great future ahead of you. In Joshua chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 7. Joshua chapter 3 we're looking at verse 7 there a prophetic day that the lord is speaking some prophetic words into your life and the lord is saying every prophecy you receive today is not just for today it's for this week it's for this month it's for this year it's for your future it's for the rest of your life and the lord is going to do everything he's saying to you today in jesus name joshua chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 7 and the lord said unto joshua joshua is gone i'm the one here now and the Lord said unto me, and the Lord said, you know, the people have gone. When you read the names of these people, you put your name there. I said you put your name there. Why will God be talking to Joshua now today when Joshua is already in heaven? And when Joshua is no more fighting any battle, when Joshua is no more being confronted by those Canaanites, you are the one on the battlefield today. And what the Lord told Joshua at that time, who is he talking to today? It's you. So you put your name there. And the Lord said unto, who is this now? Tell me out loud. And the Lord said unto you now, this day will I begin to magnify you in the sight of all Israel. It's a prophetic word for the prophetic day that is saying, it's telling you that the future is going to be greater than you ever thought. Because the Lord said, this day will I begin to magnify you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. I received that. I said I received that. It is mine, it is yours in Jesus' name. The Lord is giving us a prophetic word for today because it's a special day, unique day, and a peculiar day. And the Lord says, from this very day, you'll see it when you begin to pray after this message because something is going to happen to you. If you brought in any kind of challenge, any kind of mountain, the Lord said, from this day, I'll begin to magnify you. If you were looking small, no self-esteem and no self-confidence and no courage, and you know the people, they have slashed you to pieces, and you look so small like this in your sight, in the sight of all your enemies, and you look like a little grasshopper. You didn't even feel that you, the person you are, the person the Lord has made you, it is from this day, all that kind of mentality, the Lord will blow you away because this day he has come to magnify you and you are magnified in jesus name and your life is not going to be revolving around what the canaanite said what the jebusite said and what the high bite said it's going to be based on what the almighty god is saying in your life from today in jesus name magnify magnify have you ever seen magnifying glass that little thing will put that glass there and when you look at it the thing is bigger than you ever thought it's more than double more than triple more quadruple of what it was because there's a magnifying glass and god is holding a magnifying glass over your life and he said, I'm going to magnify you, make you bigger than you ever thought. And when the devil sees you, you're no more like a grasshopper, you're like a giant. And the devil will not know what to do with you anymore because you are magnified from today in Jesus' name. I'm looking at 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 24. 1 Samuel chapter 24. Here was, uh, you know, somebody, we'll call him, his name is David was running about and then eventually uh, something happened that is he met his enemy and when he met his enemy well he should have killed him but he didn't kill him and uh, so eventually he spoke out and then the enemy that is Saul began
began to say, is that your voice, my son? Who is he talking that I'm hearing? Look at 1 Samuel chapter 20, for a prophetic day, for a great future. Even your enemies will realize you have a great future. And they will not be able to cancel or detract from any of that greatness that is coming upon your life in Jesus' name. In 1 Samuel chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 16. And it came to pass when David had made an end of speaking these words unto Saul, that Saul said, Is this thy voice, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and tell me. Tell me out loud. <laughs> you know, this year we're not going to wait for the enemy. The enemy will wait because of us. When they see the magnitude of what you become and the greatness of what you become, and then they say, in spite of everything we did, in spite of all that, you, all the things we did behind the curtain, all the occultic power, all the evil power, all the political power, all the power, the enemy, we, we, we against this man, against this woman. See how the Lord has magnified him or magnified her. You will not weep anymore. The tears and the sorrows are now transferred to the enemy. They are the people people that will weep on your behalf in Jesus name. He lifted up his voice and he wept and he said unto David, thou art more righteous than I. It's an enemy talking to David and he said, I know you are more righteous than I. Did they say they didn't believe in your salvation? This year they will believe in your salvation. Did they say they didn't believe that you are righteous and say, well, is she not a common sinner? Is she not a common sinner? Don't you know when we're in the primary school, secondary school? They will forget your past. Your present and your future will be so magnified, they will forget the past in Jesus' name. And then Saul said, you are more righteous than I, for thou hast rewarded me good, whereas I have rewarded thee evil. Thou hast showed this day how that thou hast dwelt well, hast dealt well with me, for as much as when the Lord had delivered me to thine hand, thou killest me not. For if a man find his enemy will he let him go well away wherefore the lord reward thee good for that thou hast done unto me this day this is you, this is prayer who was praying here for david i tell i said who was praying here for david you know it's wonderful it's a normal thing if samuel will come and pray for david that's a normal thing if your pastor will come and pray for you that's a normal thing but when your enemy begins to pray for you your enemy that wanted to use all the resources in the nation and then he wanted to follow after you to kill you and to destroy you and that same enemy now turns around and instead of putting a curse upon you he begins to pray for you he even begins to prophesy i wonder why you know choir i think uh, those members of choir i think they became prophets and prophetesses this morning and they are telling us that there's a prophecy and actually they didn't know I didn't tell them my message but the Lord put that word in their mouth and the Lord is putting that word in my mouth there's a prophecy upon your life I said there's a prophecy upon your life and that prophecy is going to be fulfilled in Jesus name doesn't the Bible say out of the mouth of two or three witnesses the truth shall be confirmed? Are you in doubt anymore? Doubt your doubt. I said doubt your doubt because there's nothing for you to mistake anymore. They said it and the word of God is saying it that there's a prophecy upon your life. Look at it now. It says in verse 20 and now behold I know well here is Saul. Now, he said, David, listen to me before you go. Because I've been chasing after you. And the thing I've been trying to say is that you will never be a king. I will not live to see David reign over this land. My son Jonathan is the one that ought to reign in this land. The same person that told Jonathan, said, hey, foolish boy, as long as this David is alive, you'll never be able to ascend to the throne. Let's kill him. Get rid of him so that this David when he's gone then you will be king it is the same man that now is giving this prophecy to David and said and now behold I know well that thou shalt surely be king 
I know very well there's no shadow of doubt in my heart that David is going to be king and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in thine hand. Here is Saul saying that at his own time, Saul, the kingdom of Israel will not be established. He's saying that I know I am not the person to come and establish the kingdom but I know you David, I choose you to be an enemy. I'll be targeting your life. I want you to get rid of you but I want to prophesy to you today. He said David, listen to me. Whatever Samuel told you, I don't know. But I am telling you that I have tried you this way and this way and this way to get rid of your life and it is impossible. How can you kill a man? How can you kill a woman that has a commission from heaven? This man has a commission from heaven. I'm looking at a man in front of me. I'm looking at you here today. I'm looking at a woman there that has a commission from heaven. I said you have a commission from heaven. And who can kill you, can destroy you before that commission from heaven is ever fulfilled? Your enemy will make the prophecy real. And they will talk about because it is a prophetic day for a great future. And here comes a son and said, I know it very well. There's no shadow of doubt that you will be king over this land and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. It is done in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. You know that today this is a prophetic day for you, for your great future. Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm reading there from verse 18. It says, For behold, I have made thee. What are those words there now? This day. Everybody say this day. That's what I'm telling you. It's a special day. It's a unique day. It's a peculiar day. And the Lord is saying, I've made you this day a defense city and an iron pillar and brazen walls against the whole land and against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, and against the priesthood thereof, and against the people of the land. They shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. Look at what the Lord is telling you this day. He says, don't worry about what you see. They may conspire together. All that conspiracy, the Lord is going to scatter them in Jesus' name. You know, they may have a private meeting together. Let's meet behind that other place. Let's meet in this other place and plan. And then we're going to get rid of that man. We're going to fight against him. And all he wanted to do, all he's thinking he's going to do this year. It's a new year, new year. This year is going to be worse than all the past years. And I say Satan is a liar. Over your life, Satan is a liar. Over your life, all those demons are liars in Jesus' name. It says, I'm going to scatter them. Everybody say scatter. It will scatter them in Jesus' name. Here is what it says. They shall fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with thee, says the Lord, to deliver thee. He will deliver you in Jesus' name. The Lord is saying that all his intention for you this year, all his promises for you this year, there is nothing that can stop you because this peculiar day and this special day is a prophetic day that tells us about a great future. It will be known in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Psalm 68. Psalm 68. I'm reading from verse 30. Psalm 68. We're looking at verse 30. It says, Rebuke the company of spearmen, the multitude of the bulls, with the calves of the people till everyone submit himself with pieces of silver. You are going to read that last part that remains now in verse 30. Won't you go? Scattered out the people that delight in war. All the people that are trying to, you know, make war against your life and then oppress your life. And then they have all that conspiracy. The Lord is saying, it's going to scatter them and it will scatter them in Jesus' name. Because the Lord himself is saying, this is the prophetic day for your great future. And the greatness of the future is starting from this prophetic day in your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at Haggai chapter 2. Haggai chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 19 there. Haggai chapter 2. The Lord is telling us that this is what he's expecting in your life. And it will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Haggai chapter 2. Haggai chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 19. Is the seed yet in the Ban, yea, as yet the vine and the fig tree. And then he says, and the pomegranate and the olive tree has not brought forth from this day, from this day, from this day, 
Well, I bless you. You know what the Lord is saying? He's saying that you can forget the past. And then you understand that he's giving you a word for this day, a word for this week, a word for this month, a word for this year. And he's saying from this day, I will bless you. From this day, I am blessed. I said from this day, I am blessed. I said from this day, I am blessed. Deuteronomy chapter 28, I'm reading there from verse 1, Deuteronomy chapter 28, we're looking at it from verse 1 because it is a prophetic day for a glorious and for a great future. Deuteronomy chapter 28, I'm reading from verse 1, and shall come to pass, it is coming to pass in your life. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, this day, this day, that the Lord thy God God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Above all the nations of the earth. And if you've been looking down in the past years, why don't you look up for a moment this year? And then this year, you're not looking down as if something is on the ground over there. As if you're a man on the ground, a woman on the floor, but now you're looking up. If God has promoted you, look up. If God has exalted you, look up. Let your mind, your heart, your spirit, and everything within you look up and know that in the sky, in the heavens, the Lord has prepared and provided something for you and the sky is the limit in Jesus' name. Look at verse 1. All these blessings shall come on thee and shall overtake thee. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, blessed shalt thou be in the city. Yeah. Who is this? I said, who is this? <laughs> Wonderful. Never doubt that from today till the end of this year. Yeah. Because it is, because it is a prophetic word, a prophetic day for a great future. And it says, blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. And then it says in verse 7, the Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way, and they shall flee before thee how many ways? They'll be running helter-skelter. You will not run. I say you will not run. You will not run away from your family. You'll not run away from your place of work. You'll not run away from the church of the living God. You will stay where God has promised is going to promote you. And if anybody comes against you in that place, it's them that will be scattered out of their place in Jesus' name. Because in verse 8, the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hand to do. Everything you set your hand to do this year, the Lord will prosper everything in Jesus' name. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee. If thou shalt keep the commandment of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And then I'm reading verse 13 here. In verse 13 it says, And the Lord shall make thee. And the Lord shall make thee. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only and thou shalt not be beneath. That's the word of the Lord for you this year that is starting today. And this day is a prophetic day for a great future. But then we need to prepare because it's not just a prophetic day. It's a preparatory day. You know, I told you for the watch night service, there are people, they, all they have in their hand for the new year is a bottle of beer. All they have in their hand is just, you know, all some of these other things. But you have something that will get you into this new year with all the blessings of the Lord in Jesus' name. A preparatory day. Why don't you take this day as a preparatory day? Why don't you take some time off after the service and, and just sit down? Look at your family life. What's your goal in your family life? Look at your professional life. What's your goal for professional life? And look at your educational life, your academic life, and say, this is my goal. What do I want to learn? What do I want to know? How do I want to make progress? Even though you might not be in school or university, but you want to learn something. Learn something this year. And what's 
your your spiritual goal that this is my goal and then you put everything and then you say this day is a preparatory day for a greater future this is the way I've been in the past and this is what I'm going to be in the future and then you put on all my achievements for the past all the things I've got in the past all the experiences of the past and all the contacts I had in the past everything I did in the past but now if the future is going to be greater than the past in this area this is what I got what am I going to get now in this other area this is what I've achieved what am I going to achieve now in this area this is the joy I have the joy of achievement but in this coming year what am I going to have? A greater future. And then you make this day a preparatory day. It will be so in Jesus' name. You know, as we think about the first day, I'm going to think about the first love and the first faith and the first works and the first fruits and the first commandment and the first estate. You know, if you're thinking of the first day and then you're asking yourself, what am I going to do? Now I'm going to have a greater future. The first day must be noted or dotted by the first love. Because when you come back to the first faith and the first love and the first works and the first estate and the first commandment, everything forced in your life, you're going to be forced this year in Jesus' name. I said you'll be forced in Jesus' Jesus' name. I'm looking at you in preparatory day. Preparatory day. What do we do to really prepare? Preparatory day for a greater future. Revelation chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 4. Revelation chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 4. It says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Thou hast left thy first love. You're telling the Lord that this year, on this first day, Bring back the false love. If you're going to do that, so and so hurt me, so and so offended me, so and so big deal, big deal. So and so, you know, put a song on the ground and then I match up, big deal. And then so and so did not smile at me, big deal. Forget all about that. What's talking about your future, a greater future. And if your future is like a peel of great price, you're thinking of those things are peanuts. Throw all those peanuts away. And then the Lord is saying, you have acres of diamond waiting for you. All the plots of pebbles that, you know, you know, I struck my leg against that and that one and, you know, they made me unhappy. They made me angry and they did this against me. Now you throw all that aside and say the future is greater than all that. Because the future is great, I'm throwing all that away and the love I didn't have for them in the past year and I was carrying, you know, burning in my heart because, you know, the hatred against that and animosity against that, ill feeling against that and this against that. But think about those things. All those things, the things of the moment. Just a moment, all those things passed away. And bring back your first love. And just love God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. And love the people of God. And love even your enemies. And love everybody. If your heart is filled with love, nobody can hurt you. I said nobody can hurt you. What the Lord is walking with on this first day is your first love. It's your first love. And once he sees that love, first love, any other thing he sees, he says, everything will pass over you in Jesus' name. Number two is the first works. First works. I'm looking at it in chapter 2 of Revelation verse 5. It says, remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works. And do the false works. And do the false works. How did you act when you first became born again? How did you behave when you first became born again? How did you act to members of the church when you didn't even know their names or know where they were coming from? The false works and the false hospitality and the false help and the way you just stretch out yourself without, I don't know his tribe. I don't know his, uh, whether he speaks my language or not. I don't know anything about him. All I know about him is a child of God. And because of that, that's the way you walked in the past and the Lord is saying on this first day bring back number one the first love number two bring back the first words I'm looking at first Timothy chapter five first Timothy chapter five I'm looking at verse 12. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 12. It says, having damnation because they have cast off their first phase. They have cast off their false faith. You see, their false faith, that's what the Lord wants you to bring back. The reason why some people have defeat and damnation 
and condemnation is because the first phase, the DDT preserved that, but on this first day of the first month, the Lord is saying, you bring back the first love, you bring back the first works, and you bring back the first faith. How did you believe the Lord when you were born? You just believed him, he is my savior and my only savior. Nobody else can save me. I'm not trying to save myself. He alone, he will save me. That was your first faith. How did you believe the word of God when he gave you the promise, I will heal him. You never saw that in the Bible before. By his stripes, I am healed. You saw it for the first time. Your first faith, the way you actually believe the Lord at that time, this new year, bring back the first faith that you had. So you will not have condemnation and defeat like these people that abandoned their first faith. I'm looking at Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, we're looking at the first fruits. The first fruits. Do you remember how you came to the Lord those days on the first day of the week and the first, you just got your salary and when you got your salary and then you brought this, the first fruit. That's what the Lord is saying. He's saying because this first day of the week is of the month and of the year, it's not just also a prophetic day, a preparatory day. You bring the force, you bring the force, you bring the force. And as you bring the force, something is happening already. In the courts of heaven, on the streets of heaven, something is happening and you'll be the beneficiary in Jesus' name. It's telling us in chapter 11 verse 16, it says, For if the first fruits be holy, the lamp is holy. And if the root be holy, then the branches are holy as well. Look at chapter 16. Chapter 16, I'm reading there from verse 5. Romans chapter 16 verse 5 is talking about the first fruit. And it says, Likewise, greet the church that is in their house and salute my well beloved Epanetus and who is the first fruits of a care unto Christ the first fruit that means you are winning souls to the Lord and then when you come to the Lord as for your money the first fruits is coming to the Lord as for your resources the first fruits are coming to the Lord and as for the souls you are winning to the kingdom the first fruits they are coming in Jesus name and then don't forget the first commandment in Mark chapter 12 Mark chapter 12 Mark chapter 12 before you think of all the other commandments here is a false commandment and on this first day of the first month of this year that is going to be a great year I said it's going to be a great year. Then you bring the first commandment into your life. We're looking at Mark chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 30 there. Mark chapter 12 verse 30. It says in verse 30, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. How can you go through this first day of the first month of this great year and not think of this first commandment that Lord this year I'm going to love you with all my heart give me a good amen, amen. I'm going to love you with all my soul another amen. amen I'm going to love you with everything I have with everything there's not going to be any reservation in Jesus name and there you will not leave your first estate say I will not leave my first estate you know when God brought you into the kingdom he planned something for you and I pray that you're not going to miss the plan in Jesus' name. And you know, there are people, you know, when we see an estate, you understand an estate, where you are coming from, you have an estate over there, and then that's a physical thing, but in your estate, there's something spiritual, like God says, that is so-and-so's estate, that is so-and-so's estate, and nobody is going to take your estate from you in Jesus' name. You know, for the children of Israel, when God brought them out of the land of Egypt, he already had all the 12 tribes in mind, and he said, Joshua, you are going to do something for the tribe of Reuben, that is their estate. For the tribe of Gad, that is their estate. For the tribe of Reuben, Manasseh, that's their estate. For the tribe of Judah, that is their estate. Everyone that comes into the kingdom of God, you have your estate. I said you have your estate and you are not going to miss that estate in Jesus' name. But you know there are people, a little thing happens between them and Sister B. A little thing happens between them and Brother D. And because of that little thing, they forget all their estate. And then they say, okay, if that is so, that her Sister B will act like that. If that is so, that Brother D will talk about me and talk to me like that. Okay, I am leaving. I will not leave my estate in the hands. 
How is it? Look at everything you've got that God has promised you. And there's great year ahead of you. And because of so and so, because of such and such, because of an action of a moment, because of a comment of a moment, then you leave all your estate. I will not be foolish this year. I said I will not be foolish this year. I will not leave my estate into the hands of another person in Jesus' name. Look at Jude. Look at Jude verse 6. Jude verse 6. Even sometimes angels can be foolish. I'm sorry for them. I'm sorry for those angels that were foolish. And if we're sorry for angels who are foolish, I'm sorry for that man. I'm sorry for that woman who will be foolish. But you will not be the person I'm sorry for. I said you'll not be the person I'm sorry for. You are not going to leave your false estate in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Jude verse 6. Jude verse 6. It says, and the angels which kept not their false estate. The angels which kept not their false estate. But let their own habitation. They let their own habitation. He has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness. Unto the judgment of the great day. The preparation the Lord is telling us to make. On this preparatory day for a greater future. Is that I'll bring back the first love. Give me a good amen. amen. I'll do the first works. Another amen. And then I'm going to have the first faith in my heart. Can you say amen? amen? And then I'm also going to have the first fruit. The first fruit, I'm coming to the presence of the Lord and I bring the first fruit in my hand. And then when they say you have something to offer, I say yes with joy and cheerfulness. My first fruit I offer unto the Lord and the Lord will multiply. Give and it shall be given unto you. Press thou shaking together, running over. Shall men put your bosom in Jesus' name. And then as I go about in life, every day of this year, I remember the first commandments. When I'm in the office, that first commandment, in the home, first commandment, in the church, first commandment, I'm offering anything to the Lord. First commandment, to love the Lord my God with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, with everything within me. And then I remember there is also the first principles. The first principles, you know, when you come into the kingdom of God, there is a principle the Lord establishes in your heart. But some people, they go through life, maybe in the beginning of their first Christian life, they are the first principles but then after that no principle anymore they become people who are not principled people who have no pattern of life you just see that he's an indulgent fellow he doesn't have principle doesn't have any kind of stability or solid foundation in his life but a principled man a principled woman that he says that this is my principle and wherever i am and principle will not change and the lord is saying this first day of the first month of this year bring back the first principles in your life i'm looking at hebrews chapter 5 hebrews chapter 5 i'm reading to you there in verse 12 hebrews chapter 5 we're looking at verse 12 there you'll not be a person that has no principle in jesus name then when we'll see you a christian first love and first works and first faith and first fruit and first commandment and first estate and then the first principles in your life we're looking at uh, you know, hebrews chapter 5 verse 12 for when for the time ye ought to be teachers ye have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of God and have become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. He said there are some people they've forgotten the first principles they've forgotten the first decisions they made, consecration they made unto the Lord. He says bring that back those false principles if that is what we are to do point number three now a peculiar day for a grand future a peculiar day for a grand future your future is grand your future will be glorious in jesus name you know there's no day like this i've told you before in joshua chapter 10 i'm reading from verse 14 joshua Joshua, I'm reading to you there in chapter 10, and we're looking at verse 14. Joshua chapter 10. We're looking at such a peculiar day. This day is a peculiar day in your life. I thought you'll say amen. amen. Joshua chapter 10. Joshua chapter 10. And we're reading from verse 14. It says, And there was no day like that before it or after it. Didn't I tell you peculiar, peculiar, unique, and special? There was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. The Lord is going to fight for you. 
this day, a peculiar day, no day like this. You must understand that this special day, anything you open your mouth to say that is beneficial, that is going to make your life great and this year, anything you open your mouth to say after this message right there where you are now, God is going to confirm it in Jesus' name. There is no day like this before or after that God God will hack into the voice of a man and the voice of a woman. The Lord is opening the sky, the heavens before you and the Lord is saying, if you had miracles before this is a special day, greater miracle. If you had signs and wonders before this is a special day, greater signs and wonders that there is no day like this that God will hack into any man and any woman. Therefore, you are now formulating what you are going to say. When it comes to the time to pray, don't ask for peanuts and for toys as for something great and something big and God is going to do it in your life in Jesus name what a day what a day what a day it's going to be like that in your life in Jesus name look at verse 42 verse 42 and all these kings and their land the Joshua take at one time because the Lord God of Israel fought for Israel the Lord is fighting for you from now on I said it's fighting for you from now on you don't have any battles to fight anymore God has taken over your battles and is going to fight for you in Jesus name look at Joshua chapter 23 Joshua 23 I'm reading from verse 3 there and ye have seen all that the Lord your God has done unto all these nations because of you because of you for the Lord your God is he that hath fought for you the Lord has fought for you then look at verse 5, it says in verse 5, And the Lord your God, he shall expel them from before you, and drive them from out of your sight, and you shall possess their land, as the Lord your God has promised unto you. Be ye therefore very courageous, this is a year of courage, to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that ye turn not aside therefrom to the right hand or to the left, that ye come not among these nations, these that remain among you, neither make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow yourselves unto them, but cleave unto the Lord your God. As ye have done unto this day, for the Lord your God has driven out from before you great nations and strong, but as for you, no man has been able to stand before you unto this day. One man of you shall chase a thousand for the Lord your God. God, he it is that fighteth for you as he has promised you. As he has promised you. I said as he has promised you. He will do it in Jesus name. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20. The Lord is telling you that this year all your battles, he has taken all your battles over. And he it is that will fight for you in Jesus name. I'm looking at Second Chronicles chapter 20. I'm reading there from verse 15. It says in verse 15. And he said, Hacking ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord unto you. Remember, Jehoshaphat is gone. You are the person here now. You are the one the Lord is speaking to today. Be not afraid, nor dismayed, by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. The battle is not yours, but the battle belongs to the Lord. Look at verse 17. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself and stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. What a day, what a day, what a day is today that the Lord is saying for the rest of this week and this month and this year, the Lord will be with you in Jesus' name. Look at verse 20, and they rose in the morning, and they rose early in the morning, and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went for Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, and so shall ye be established. Any believer here today? As any believer there today? You are established in Jesus' name. 
and then believe his prophets and so shall ye prosper. This year I will prosper. I said this year I will prosper because I believe I'm going to prosper in Jesus name. Because you believe you're going to prosper in Jesus name. Now Haggai chapter 2. We're back to Haggai. Haggai has a word for you before you leave here today. Everybody say Haggai chapter 2. Haggai chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 7. It says, and I will shake all nations. And the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. Do you have any project you have been contemplating? I want to do that, but there's no money. The silver is mine and the gold is mine. Do you have an assignment you want to carry out and say, but where is the money? The gold is mine, the silver is mine, says the Lord. You want to educate that child, you want to get that thing for your wife, establish your wife in that thing, and then you're saying, but where is the money? It says the silver is mine and the gold is mine. And you're thinking, about the church, your local church or you know your regional church, you're thinking of the state church or whatever it is, national church and the Lord is saying the silver is mine and the gold is mine says the Lord there is no limitation this year there is no lack this year the Lord will provide and supply all our needs this year in Jesus name verse 9 and the glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former I thought you missed an amen over there. The glory of this latter house. The rest of your life. The rest of your life. You know, brush all those tears away and all you are thinking about all the confusion and the sorrow and the oppression and depression of the past. Brush all that away because something is happening today. Now the Lord is saying, look at your life. This life, the glory of the latter part of my life shall be greater than of the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, says the Lord of hosts. In this same place where you have been, and it appears nothing will ever grow, and nothing will ever come out. In this same place, the glory of the Lord will be upon your life in Jesus' name. Today is the first day of your glorious future. It is beginning. I said it's beginning. You've got the prophecy. You've got the preparation. You've got the peculiarity. And everything is confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. Why don't you rise up and claim it and say, Lord, I accept that. That is mine. I believe that that is mine. And the Lord says, this year is the year of fulfillment. It's a year of upliftment. It's a year of glory in your life. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, I accept that. I accept that. I accept. I believe that that is mine. What a year. What a year and what a day we have today that the Lord is telling you that the Lord is saying the glory of the latter house, the latter glory, the coming glory, the future glory is greater, is greater than that of the past. The Lord will do it. The Lord will do it. The Lord will do it. What a prophecy the Lord is bringing upon your life today and the Lord is saying every prophecy that the Lord pronounces and predicts upon your life will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Every promise of God that the Lord has given you this day, it is just and it's going to be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Every proclamation that the Lord has given you, this is that year of fulfillment. All your sins are forgiven. All your sicknesses are gone. All the oppression is gone. All the affliction is gone. All those works of the devil, they're destroyed. There is an anointing coming upon your life that destroys and breaks every yoke in your life. And the Lord is saying, the Lord is saying, this is your year, the year of glory, the year of blessing, the year of fulfillment. The Lord is bringing upon your life even today. It is mine. It is mine. It is mine. You will not miss it. It's a prophetic day for a great future. A prophetic day for a great future is a preparatory day. It's a preparatory day. Take some time and sit down and make an inventory. This is what I was in the past. This is what I'm going to be in the future. This is what I accomplished in the past. This is what I'm going to accomplish in the future. This is what I achieved in the past. And this is what I'm going to achieve in the future. It's a preparatory day day for a greater future a preparatory day prepare today prepare today take some time off and say lord my family this is how it will be my children this is how they are going to be 
my husband decides going to be that's what i'm going to contribute into my husband's life to make him what he ought to be my wife this is how she's going to be that's what i'm going to contribute to my wife's life to make her what she ought to be and then the church local church i belong to this is what i'm going to contribute to make the church what it ought to be and our church in general the glory that is to come the glory that is to come this is what i'm going to contribute for our church to be what our church ought to be you tell the lord oh lord i'm going to make this day a preparatory day for a greater future a peculiar day a peculiar day no other day like this day no other time like this time another period like this period no other opportunity like this opportunity for a man to open his mouth and for a woman to open her mouth and to say something that god is going to answer like no other day like no other time like no other period in your life what a day a day of answered prayer what a day a day of signs and wonders what a day a day of miracles what a day a day when you do exploits and exploits in the name of the what a day what a day what a day this is a day when the lord himself is saying mention it i'll give it to you claim it i'll give it to you and it says everything you open your mouth to say on this special day this peculiar day this important day this unique day i'm going to grant unto you it's going to do it it's going to do it this is that day it's like no other day in your life since you became a christian since you came into the kingdom of god there's no other day like this one open your mouth and tell the lord what a peculiar day what a peculiar day what a peculiar day the lord himself is saying i'm doing this for you right now i'm doing this for you right now you never had an opportunity like this before a peculiar opportunity a peculiar privilege the lord is giving you right now and he's saying say it and i give it to you say it and i'll give it to you tell me and i'll do it for you that's what the lord is saying right now you can tell the lord oh lord make it a unique day for me make it a special day for me. make it a peculiar day for me and the lord will do it in your life the lord will do it in your life what a glorious day for a glorious future a great day for a great future a peculiar day for a peculiar future and the lord is saying i'm going to do it I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. You never had something like this before in your life. Not a day like this in your life before you're telling the Lord, Oh Lord, here am I. Oh Lord, here am I. Make it like you said it. Do as thou hast said. Do as thou hast said. A great future. A glorious future. A greater future. A grand future. The Lord is promising you today. Uh, saying, oh Lord, I'm ready. Oh Lord, I'm ready. Oh Lord, I'm ready. It's going to be so. It's going to be so. You tell the Lord. You tell the Lord. Make it a prophetic day. Make it a prophetic day. Make it a prophetic day. That the Lord himself will fulfill that prophecy in your life. All those promises of a yes and amen in your life. What a day. What a day. What a day. The first day of the first month of this wonderful year. The first day of your glorious future. The first day of your glorious future. Look at every area of your life and be ready for preparation. Preparation. You need to prepare for this promotion coming. You need to prepare for this progress coming upon your life. You need to prepare for this prosperity that is coming. You need to prepare. You need to prepare a preparatory day. A preparatory day for a greater future. Look at every section of your life. Family life. Spiritual life. Academic life. Professional life. Personal life your social life everything around you i said this is my goal this is my dream this is my desire and let those desires come in the very presence of the lord on this prophetic day on this preparatory day on this peculiar day and look at the future that is stretched before you Look at the future that is stretched before you. You are telling the Lord, O oh Lord, 
make it so. Oh Lord, make it so. Oh Lord, make it so. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. He cannot fail. Yes, he will. He will not fail. Yes, he will. He has a covenant with you. He has a commitment unto you. And because of that commitment and covenant, he will not fail and he cannot fail. He will not fail. He cannot fail. It's a faithful God. It's a covenant keeping God. And you are telling the Lord, Oh Lord, what a day this is in my life. What a day this is in my life. What a day this is in my life. Talk to the Lord. And He will fulfill. Talk to the Lord. And He will fulfill everything He has promised. For the promises unto you, the prophecy is unto you, the proclamation is unto you, and to your family, and to your children, as many as the Lord our God shall call. What a day! What a day! What a day! You receive it, you accept it, you believe it, then you go. Out of this place, victorious. Out of this place, courageous. Out of this place, confident. That what the Lord has said, he will do. He definitely will do. What the Lord has said, he will do. He definitely will do. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. It's never been known to fail. It cannot fail. It will not fail. It's a faithful God. It's a faithful God. Trust Him. It's a faithful God. Believe Him. It's a faithful God. Accept all that He has promised. A yea and amen. A yea and amen. A yea and amen. In Jesus' name we pray. I want a new year. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. You know, if, if you say an amen like old year, amen, Satan will say, all right, that's all the amen they can say, so I'm going to give them what they want. I said, in Jesus' name we pray. <laughs> wonderful. I said, wonderful. I said wonderful. How many of you have uh, how many of you have um, the the book that contains the promises God has given you? How many of you have the book that has all the prophecies God has given you? And you believe every promise here? I said you believe every promise here. I said you believe every promise here. This is your title deed for this year. This is your bank account for this year. This is your hospital for this year. This is the battalion of armies and troops that will defend you this year. Raise that Bible up. Raise that Bible up and say this after me. Oh Lord, I hold in my hand the book of your promises. I hold in my hand the book of prophecy. I hold in my hand the book that declares my victory through the promises here through the promises here this year I will overcome this year I am prospered this year I am healed this year I am protected this year 
All things are possible for me. This year, my mountains are gone. This year, all my difficulties are taken away. This year will be the best year of my life that I ever lived. Lord, today, with this book in my hand, this book in my heart, I face a great future. I face a greater future. I face a glorious future. I believe. I accept. It is done. It is done. It is done. Now you put the Bible down and give a clap offering to the Lord that will make the devil dead. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Heaven will keep on clapping for you for the rest of the year. The joy in heaven over your life. Glory. 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 Praise the Lord. Now those anointed hands, you raise them up now. You know, this year, everything you touch will turn to blessing. There is an anointing that comes upon your life and that anointing will break every yoke in your life in Jesus' name. When you lay that hands upon yourself later, don't lay it on yourself. Not let it be another before you lay that hand. When you lay it upon yourself, all calamity gone. All evil gone. All the heartaches of the past, everything gone. Those hands will prosper. These hands will do signs and wonders. And when you lay that hand on the sick, today, today, find somebody who is sick and test the word I'm telling you. And lay that hand on this and say, in Jesus' name, I lay anointed hand upon you. They will recover in Jesus' name. Your wife will not die prematurely. Your husband will not die prematurely. Your members of your church will not die prematurely. From this day, Signs and wonders will follow you. Miracles will follow after you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for every brother here, every sister here, every mother here, every father here, every child here, every boy here, every girl here. Oh, Lord, I pray, anoint everyone for a glorious future in Jesus' name. I pray all the impossibilities of the past will become possible from this day in Jesus' name. All the calamities of the past, they are gone in Jesus' name. For every brother, every sister, every boy, every girl, everyone in here today, everyone hearing the word and participating in the service today, a great future. Oh Lord, a glorious future. Oh Lord, a grand future. And I pray it will be a better, brighter future for everyone in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, you take all that broom from heaven and sweep away every evil from their lives in Jesus' name. Let the joy of the Lord be their strength. Oh Lord, I pray all your resources from heaven you put into every life from today in Jesus' name. Your first estate, nobody can take from you. Your first habitation, nobody will take from you. All the privileges, opportunities God has given you in this life, nobody will take from you in Jesus' name. I pray in the house, there'll be blessing. In your church, there'll be blessing. In the office, there'll be blessing. In your school, there'll be blessing. In your market, there'll be blessing. Everywhere you turn, you turn into blessing in Jesus' name. Your persecutors will be ashamed. Your oppressors will be confused. And all the people that try to run after your life and they want to destroy your life, I pray, oh Lord, put all their imaginations and all their conspiracy into nothing in Jesus' name. No weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. Every tongue that comes against you in judgment, you will condemn in Jesus' name. From glory to glory, 
from faith to faith, from strength to strength, from greatness to greatness, from provision to provision, from abundance to abundance, from one level of honor to another level of honor. God has made you the head this day. He has raised you up. Nothing will bring you down again in Jesus' name. He has brought you to the mountain top. You'll never descend back into the valley anymore in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray there'll be an amen from heaven upon everything we have said today and seal and seal and seal all their blessings in Jesus' name. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. And God bless every one of you. Amen. Would you turn to the next person there and say, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. And say, Same to you. I'll meet you on the top. I said, I'll meet you on the top. I said, I'll meet you on the top. God bless every one of you.